Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Halloween Cup, showcasing another very powerful team featuring Jellicent. Jellicent, very strong in this meta right now. A lot of people running Azumarill, Toxapex, and other poison types. Jellicent handles them brilliantly. It will be in the back along with Runarigas on the safe swap. Generally on the safe swap, uh, both Pokemon actually function as very solid safe swap options, but Runarigas can of course have the ability to debuff or put heavy pressure on shields and rounding out the team Toxicroak on the lead to protect our two ghost types in the back from all of the dark types running rampant in the Halloween Cup. Yeah guys, I've just been seeing so many dark type leads. Toxicroak just made perfect sense on the lead here, but not with a Dedenne lead. Holy smokes, fairy leads are becoming quite popular as well. We go in the Runarigas to force the swap. They come in with a Fire Fang Mawile and we are going right for it. So many people expect the bait, but we're not baiting and we're doing big damage. And just like that, the Mawile has exited the field, courtesy of Runarigas putting in work on the safe swap. You'd love to see it. Gonna try our luck again. They've got a Dragalge lurking in the back, going straight for this Shadow Ball, and they let it go again. Holy smokes. <laughs> Runarigas is on an absolute rampage here, and now we will let this go. Runarigas did the job, took out nearly two Pokemon. We can actually come in with Jellicent and go for an aggressive farm down with Hex here. They will make it to a move, but we don't really want to leave this healthy. Jellicent, quite bulky in the back, uh, can tank one of anything from this uh, Dragalge. They go for the Aqua Tail, likely not running Outrage. And this was a little aggressive. I think we went to the well a few too many times here as they do shield the Shadow Ball, but uh, it's fine. Jelly grabbed the shield advantage, which is exactly what we needed for our Toxic Rogue here. And uh, Dedenne does outpace uh, to these discharges, and they hit pretty hard with Stab, so we're uh, going to shield that. We do have the shield advantage. Might as well leverage that there, and we go for the Mud Bomb. They shield, and now it is smooth sailing from here. Uh, they will reach another discharge. We shield this one. They will reach a third discharge here, but uh, rank two Toxicroak, I think, might just be up to the task of surviving this discharge long enough to get this mud bomb off and seal the deal here. Up against little old Dene here in the meta, Halloween Cup meta. They do top left before they could see their fate play out. Toxicroak was going to KO with that mud bomb. They top left. Good game. Well played to them. This Jellicent team was really putting in a lot of work in the Halloween Cup. Jellicent addresses a lot of what we see in the Halloween Cup. And here we go. Another fairy lead with Whimsicott this time. Uh, Whimsicott, very interesting pick for this meta here. They play to a CMP tie that they do not win. Toxicroak often does not lose CMP tie. Gonna bait with a Mud Bomb, grabbing a shield as Sludge Bomb would uh, definitely one-shot this Whimsicott here. And they bait us back with a Grass Knot here. So keeping track of the energy, the Whimsicott counts are the same as Cresselia. 665 for Grass Knot, 776 for Moonblast. And we knew that that was just a Grass Knot. They aggressively pivot into a Fortress. So arguably could have just uh, kept this energy. I don't think we needed to throw that, but it will make it a lot easier for Jellicent as it, after the hex, after we, uh, we're gonna hex it into single Shadow Ball range here and look to leave this matchup with energy to threaten the Whimsicott, which will undoubtedly come back in. So we're just gonna ju just about max out there. One hex shy of uh, max energy and go for the Shadow Ball. They let it go. We take out the Fortress. And they do come back in with the Whimsicott. Going to overload, throw with proper timing after three here. And go for a Surf Bait here. Whimsicott, not known for its bulk. We do grab the shield. Threatening the Shadow Ball, but baiting with the Surf. Going to shield this. I think this energy is quite valuable on Jellicent here. And I think it's just about within resisted Surf range at this point. So we're, we're going to go for that here. Doesn't quite KO. We tried to snipe, but... Uh, they were on to us. Uh, good read by them. And they've got a Wormadam in the back. Jelly. Also an excellent answer to all of the Wormadams. Um, so yeah, that's why it made perfect sense to run Jelly on this team here. Uh, but um, Jelly's not on the Wormadam. Runarigas was. And Runarigas almost as good of an answer as uh, it was not going to get past Runarigas. Good game. Well played to them. 
Yeah, guys, this Jellison team was very effective. Had a very good day yesterday with this team here. And here we go. Shadow Scizor lead. They are running Bullet Punch. And these Shadow Bullet Punches with Stab really do add up against Toxicroak. This matchup is a lot closer than it should be just because Toxicroak does not, uh, not known for its bulk. And again, like I said, the fast move pressure is quite intense. Um, they're going to go for, I would presume, a Night Slash. Even a resisted Night Slash from this thing would be doing some meaningful damage. And I debated letting this go. As uh, Jelly, I think, could have farmed down in three hexes. But we do elect a shield and take out the uh, Scizor, control the alignment. And um, seeing this here, there's a Toxapex. We have loaded energy. We really didn't... Uh, May maybe didn't need to preserve Toxicroak there, but that's okay. Toxicroak's still going to put in the work, holy smokes. We get to another Mud Bomb here. Does hit this thing for super effective, but as we all know, Toxapex tanks damage for days, but we've got two amazing answers to Toxapex on this team. Um, Toxicroak very good up against it as well, so Toxapex ra uh, rarely has anywhere to go with this team, and there's a car bank in the back, so this is over. We had the perfect team for a lot of what we see in this meta right now. They let the Shadow Ball go as they can survive. We can also survive a Moon Blast here. So hopefully you guys are seeing the effectiveness of this team here. Um, a, a little bit of thought went into it. Uh, it's designed to handle a lot of what we often see. They realized this battle was not trending in the right direction for them as they do promptly top left. It was just about over. Good game. I'll well play to them. Yeah, guys, if you're sick and tired of seeing Greninja, Guzzlords, wireless leads, this team might just be for you. Speaking of, oh, you'd love to see it if you run Toxicroak on the lead. Oh, and they've got a car bank. They're core broken by a Toxicroak lead. Oh, it is uh, very nice. Very satisfying. Shutting down the very annoying Greninja car bank core. Uh, Toxicroak, an excellent answer, of course, to Carbank as well. But we're going to align Renorigus here, which is uh, equally as good of an answer to a Carbank and save our Toxicroak for that uh, Greninja. Um, we do tank their move. They tank ours, and they're going to have a very difficult time tanking a second. But it's not likely they shield because they're going to want to come in and I would imagine farm us down with their Greninja. That's the play for them. They do let the Shadow Ball go. They're thinking this Greninja will get hit with a move. That's probably what they're thinking about. Just a Sand Tomb, but as we all know, Greninja not known for its bulk, and this debuff is absolutely clutch because it gets them thinking now. They're going to be taking insane damage from our super effective counters. Uh, they do take one there, but they're going to look to pressure a shield from us. That is fine. We're happy to shield that. And they've got a Toxapex in the back. This is over. Jellicent, Hardwalls, Toxapex like you wouldn't believe. And with so many running rampant in the Halloween Cup, like I said, it made perfect sense to run Jellicent. Jellicent answers so much of what we see. Has amazing play up against Azumarill. We thoroughly dominate Toxapex. And we have tremendous play up against Wormadam Trash in this meta. Uh, Jellicent was the way yesterday. Uh, the winds were coming in left, right, and center with this team. It was amazing. Gonna go for another Shadow Ball on CMP Tie, which we do absolutely win over Toxapex. And we will let the Sludge Wave go here. I do imagine they're gonna try and aggressively swap here. Switch Clock is just about up. We're gonna delete this Greninja with a few counters. And we have a Mud Bomb and a half locked and loaded for that Toxapex. It was over. A valiant effort by them. They tried their very best, but uh, we had the right team for them. Good game. Well played to them. Yeah, guys, if you have all three of these Pokemon available, I would definitely recommend giving it a try. Um, I think Coffergrigus would be a decent replacement for Runarigus if you don't have one. But here we go, Dragalge. Very tricky lead for Toxicroak as these Dragon Claws with Stab really do add up. And uh, like a Bozo, we throw on alignment trying to play to a CMP tie, but... Uh, yeah, trainers are well aware that they should go for the extra, and they played that brilliantly. We also tried to catch an Aqua Tail here, but was not successful in doing so. And uh, get hit, we get hit for, uh, we get hit by an outrage for our troubles, and we just cannot farm this thing down. So this is a misplay. I do believe we survived this Aqua Tail, so we definitely didn't need this shield that. So. A lot of misplays here thus far, uh, which is uh, not good by us. Uh, but they do have a Toxapex here. 
So the shield may not have been too bad because if we had tanked that, they would have been able to resist it, farm us down, and we would not have made it to another uh, Shadow Ball. But they just farmed down anyway, so yeah, the shield was bad. Should not have shielded that. Because now, obviously, we're at the shield disadvantage, and we can't shield this. We don't know what they have lurking in the back. We do survive that brine, and they have their own Jellicent in the back, so shouts to them. They're making the same meta read that we were making, running their own jelly in the back, and we're just going to YOLO this Shadow Ball, hope for the best, and uh, they are not uh, messing around. There, There's no need to call uh, unnecessarily try and call a bait here when you're up shields. We shield the Surf, which we would have survived. Um, and we're just going to try our best here. We're going to try and fake another Shadow Ball. I don't know if they've been keeping track of the energy. We were one Shadow Claw off, so we're going to fake it here. And we should make it to a second Sand Tomb here. Um, these Shadow Claws are really going to start adding up here. But we don't get new mechanic. Oh, they hex us down. I think that sand tomb um, would have been very beneficial for us. But yeah, a lot of mistakes there. Not getting new mechanic. That one just did not go our way. Good game. Well played to them. Yeah, that last one, in case you're wondering, was definitely winnable. Uh, just a few too many misplays. But here we go. We're making up for it with a juicy Guzzlord lead. You'd love to see it, guys. I'm telling you, I was sick and tired of Dark-type leads nonstop here in the Halloween Cup. And uh, we will shield the Dragon Claw, although we do survive that. And they make a play into a Fortress. Hello? This team, very weak to a Toxicroak lead thus far. But we're going to preserve Toxicroak for that Guzzlord as uh, Jelly can absolutely handle this Fortress here, no problem. Uh, Jelly actually has the worst matchup on our team against uh, Guzzlord, so that's why we align it here. We do survive that Earthquake quite comfortably, I must say, and we're going to go for the Shadow Ball here. Arguably could have let, let ourselves get a little bit lower. Um, we should have farmed a little more before throwing that Shadow Ball, but that's okay. Um, so they're thinking long and hard here. Um, there should not be any question as to what they should be bringing in. Uh, so we're going to go for the Shadow Ball. That's what you want to do on Guzzlord if you can pull it off. If you have the energy, that's going to be the harder hitting move. Both are resisted. They shield that? That was a very interesting shield right there, um, but they are absolutely loaded here. They've got a car bank in the back, and it is Runa Riga's time. Oh, you'd love to see it. Guys, if you're sick and tired of seeing car bank plus a dark type in this meta nonstop, I'm telling you, this is the team for you right here. I certainly was, and um, yeah, this team is built to thoroughly handle that um, that line car bank plus dark type uh does not have a prayer against this team right here for some very obvious reasons um we're just going to overload as much as possible just about cap out on energy i don't anticipate a shield here i would imagine they would want to try and farm down with that guzzlord they do let that go and i wanted to leave with a move to hit that guzzlord with this is just going to add a little insult to injury here and we are going to snipe while they're stuck in that dragon tail animation. They go down with all that energy they've been farming and uh, Toxicroak takes it out. Good game. Well played to them. Oh man, shutting down dark type plus card bank was a beautiful thing with this team. And here we go. Um, core breaker here. Charge a bug. Core breaks Toxicroak jelly quite a bit, but one Pokemon cannot do it all. We go right for the Sludge Bomb. You do need to land one in this matchup to eat, uh, squeak it out, but um, we should be baiting. A lot of uh, Charge a Bug trainers know that, so we're going to actually catch this move here onto our Runarigus. That's a brilliant catch, I must say, if I must pat myself on the back, and we do draw out a Greninja, so... Another core that is very annoying, Charge a Bug Greninja core, almost as annoying as uh, Dark Type plus Carbon core. Maybe more annoying, I don't know, I can't tell. I think it's just Greninja that's annoying, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, so they do take us out with the Night Slash. Uh, Runarig has put in tremendous work on that Greninja, they don't make it to another move. This Charge a Bug does have energy here, so we're gonna actually shield this. We've got to put in a little bit of work here, get some damage in on this Charger Bug here. This time we're going to bait um, as they did shield the first time. So we're going to bait this time with the neutral hitting Mud Bomb. And they let that go. 
So that's okay. We just needed to get some damage in. Jelly should be able to farm this thing down. Toxicroak got it into a manageable health range. We are employing a team effort here up against this Charger Bug, and they've got their own Jelly in the back. And this is effectively over because they are behind a turn and we're going we're gonna to just outpace by a single turn every time here. We go right for the Shadow Ball knowing that we are slightly ahead. And they should be baiting. They probably know that we know they should be baiting. So they go for the Shadow Ball and we shield that. A little bit of five head play there on both ends and like i said we do outpace by a single turn here they have no shields we're saying bye bye to the jelly and we should outpace this charge a bug here as i do believe they're on their three cycle and we do we go for this surf and this will be sealing the deal core breaker no problem for this team guys you just have to play um play accordingly and employ a team effort good game well played to them so as you can see, Toxic Kirk, Double Ghost can handle a Charger Bug, no problem. Here we go, another Fairy lead coming in the form of Azumarill this time here. This is okay when we have shields up. Um, we're just going to throw with proper timing here. You want to be throwing on 1, 4, 7, or 10. Um, you almost exclusively want to throw on 10 or 7 up against Azu, uh, which is what we do there. They shield, so... We tried to catch a move onto Jellicent, and they bring in a Golurk here onto our Jellicent. We are well ahead on energy. Golurk, about as squishy as it gets. All we need is a Surf to take this thing out. Um, and it's not a Shadow, so I um, do see that, but it's still going to go down to a single Surf. And right about here, we should be over farming a lot more. It takes them five of their mud slaps to get to a shadow punch, so a missed opportunity to load up on energy there. And uh, they've got a charge a bug lurking in the back, so I really don't know why they didn't bring this in onto our jelly. Perhaps reading that we were trying to draw out something like this, but that's not particularly what we were trying to do. So they may be slightly off on their read. That Shadow Ball does a lot of damage and they allow us to get to another Surf. Perhaps they lost track of the energy. We're saying bye-bye to the annoying Charger Bug. And now we throw Runarigas in to absorb all the damage that Azu has farmed. The Azumarill has yet to throw a move in this entire battle. So we're just going to fully sack Runarigas here. Allow them to dump all this energy here on us. And they do throw their second Ice Beam here. And now it is smooth sailing for Toxicroak. Up a shield. A Sludge Bomb will just about KO this thing. No problem. And uh, we do get to the Sludge Bomb here. It will not quite KO, but it will effectively be ending the battle. They recognize that. And they do promptly top left. Not sticking around to see their fate play out. Good game. Well played to them. Yeah, guys, with everything that we've been seeing lately, I saw a glaring opportunity to run Toxicroak Jelly Core, and it was amazing. Here we go, Nidoqueen. We've got three amazing answers to Nidoqueen here. Toxicroak can do quite all right on the lead. We do outpace to these super effective Mud Bombs, and they have to bait in this matchup to perhaps flip it. We do grab an early shield, and we're going to return the shield just in case they go right for the Earth Power. They do not. They do bait. And that is all right. We are uh, playing with that in mind. They've got a jelly. That threw me off. I was not expecting that. So we throw the wrong move. Awful, awful play. Um, you definitely want to be throwing Mud Bomb there. And recognizing that we don't want to come in with either of our two ghost types at a energy disadvantage, we're just going to let Toxic Rogue go. We know that we have two amazing answers remaining to that Nido Queen. We're going to bring in our Shadow Claw user. Runarigas here on this jelly. We will have to tank a surf in the process. Gonna let this go. And we will look to build up a little bit extra and go for the shadow ball here. Sand tomb would not quite be enough. And we don't wanna have to give up another shield here. We're saying bye bye to the jelly. And they do still have that Nido Queen remaining. Not sure what else they could have lurking in the back. They're thinking about it. It's in a zoom roll, so it was double water. Nido Queen double water. Very interesting line here, but uh, like I mentioned many times throughout this video, Nido Queen handles a lot of what we see. Ex Exum um, excuse me, Azumarill is included in that as well as Nido Queen, <clears throat> which is why uh, it's a good time to run it right now. They do go right for the Earth Power. We do survive that, no problem. Uh, it's getting a little bit dicey here. Gonna go for the Surf. 
it won't quite KO, but it will be putting it within hex down. Well, yeah, actually, it would it would definitely have KO'd from that range, uh, which is why we overloaded to hex it within surf range. We knew that this was just a poison fang, and we elect to throw the surf here. We're going to have to immediately swap out. We've been debuffed. We do resist bubble, but we can't tank one there. We do immediately swap out to clear that debuff. We need to get this shadow ball damage off on this Azumarill here. And they will, I would presume, go for an aggressive farm down. But that's why we preserve that shield. Um, anything KOs from this range, we just need to make it to a surf here. We do get that hex through. They should not outpace us. We just need to survive. One more resisted bubble and we survive it. Holy smokes. Jellicent coming in clutch. This team core broken by Jellicent. We're saying bye-bye to the Azu. And just like that, Jellicent comes in clutch, puts the team on its back, closes the game in dominant fashion. Very exciting game there. And that is the team, my friends. Good game well played to our opponent. And like I said, guys, with all that we've been seeing as of late in this Halloween Cup meta, I just saw a glaring opportunity to run a Toxicroak lead and back that up with a Jelly in the back. Um, it was just um, putting in phenomenal work, addressing a lot of what we often see now, most notably the Dark plus Carbank core with the Dark type lead. Even if they do lead the Carbank, Toxicroak would have addressed it in either fashion. I just wanted to really protect it from Wormadam trash first and foremost. And these two ghost types have amazing play up against Wormadam, more so Jelly, as Jelly does hardwall the conventional moveset on Wormadam. Resist the uh, Iron Head plus the Bug Buzz. Runarigas um, has tremendous play up against Worm as well. That's a very positive matchup for Runarigas. And we just had to protect it, um, of course, from the dark types with Toxic Oak on the lead, guys. Like I said, that's a recipe for a lot of success and a lot of fun addressing all of these common lines. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.